Hello, John Bloodworth, Gentleman Crafter here, and this time I'd like to show you some of the digital uh, machine embroidery that I've been working on. Now, I'm still learning the software that I'm using, but what I've been able to figure out is how to recolor a design. Doesn't sound much, but for me, it's amazing. Um, so I'm going to share that with you. Just a reminder, I'm using the Hatch Embroidery software. I'll leave a link in the um, comment section of this video on YouTube, and also I'll leave a link on the blog as well. That's gentlemancrafter.com. Do pop over if you haven't visited before. It'd be good to see you there. Right, so I'll get over to the computer and I'll switch screens and then we can get started. So as I said, I'm in the Hatch Embroidery software. And for this particular thing, I'm going to be using the Composer um, option. There are four different uh, levels of the digitizing software from Hatch Embroidery. But the reason for this is because I wanted the Edit Objects tab, and that only becomes available in the Composer um, option. So that's what I'm using. But you can recolor in any of the um, different levels. So. These are a few of the designs that I've got myself from um, Embroidery Library and also from Urban Threads. Again, I'll leave links um, where appropriate. I'm going to choose this design down here, which is this butterfly with um, some uh, drawn designs around it and also some text. So I'll just double click to load it. It will give me the warning about it being a non-native design. That basically means that if I resize this design more than 10% larger or smaller, it might produce poorer quality embroidery. I'm not going to resize, so I'm not worried about that at all. The first thing that I'm going to do before I do anything else is change my hoop size. And I always use my larger hoop size anyway at the moment. Um, so I'll change that. I've got it set on my machine, which is a Brother Innovis. Um, so that's fine. And also what I'm going to do is go into the design settings. And choose auto fabric. And I'm going to choose linen with two levels of tear away stabilizer. And what that's going to do is set the stitching up so that it's got the right configuration for that combination. Now, I said that I wanted um, the composer for a particular reason, and it's this. It's because I've got the sequence tab, and that's accessed through the edit objects um, toolbox over on the left. And you would go into here, sequence, if it's not already open. I'm going to change this from objects to colors. So now I can see the individual parts of the design. Down on the bottom left, I can see the active colors. They're indicated by the little blue box above the color. So I've got six active colors, although technically there's five uh, because the last color is a repeat of the first color, just stitches on top. Now I want to change the colors to uh, match the embroidery threads that I've got. So I'm going to open up my select thread charts. Now I can choose Sulky Viscose Rayon, or I could choose any of these others that are available in the software. The reason I'm choosing Sulky Viscose Rayon is because it is a Gutterman thread, but it's under a separate color chart. So you can see here, there's all the other Gutterman threads, but actually the one that I want is way down the bottom. Sulky, Sulky, Sulky. Sul oh, it's already over here. <laughs> it would normally be over there. And then I put it over here. So you can manage which color charts you're actually referencing. So I'm going to click on that. And now I've got the entire Sulky Viscose color range, color chart available to me to recolor my design with. So I'm going to start uh, doing that. And I'm going to choose this first section first by clicking on the picture. Uh, so that's chosen that. And then over here, I go to code or name, and I'm going to type in the code that I find on top of the um, reel of thread. So that's here. And I will type that into this box. And that will find the color for me. So as long as I have that highlighted or that down there on the left, I then click here and it changes that color for me. 
I'd like the last part to be the same colour, so I'm also going to do that as, this, as the aqua as well. And then the main wings area I'm going to do in a darker turquoisey colour. We'll actually see what the colour name is when this gets typed in. Wild Peacock, apparently. So there we go, that's that one changed. And then for this next part, I'm actually going to do in a pink colour. Orchid. And then for this sort of shading on the wings, I will be doing in a purple colour. It's deep purple. And then for the actual outline of the butterfly, I'm going to go very dark and use almost black. So we can see on the screen now how um, that's coming out and how it will look when it's stitched, which I think is going to work quite well. So what I need to do now is export this uh, onto my uh, USB drive that I'm going to transfer over to the machine. So I would go to Output Design, Export Design, and I've got it set to the right um, file format. Obviously within this software you've got all of the different machine embroidery formats. And I would click Save. And that's now saved to my USB drive, so I'm going to take that over to the embroidery machine and start stitching it out. Okay, so I have my embroidery hoop here ready. I've already taken the two parts um, apart. And I'm using two pieces of Tearaway Embroidery Stabilizer along with a piece of just natural linen. So as you remember, I set this up in the Hatch Embroidery software to take this into account because I'm using obviously a thicker sandwich than just the fabric on its own. Now I'm just putting the top hoop into the embroidery frame, making sure that the fabric is taut but not stretched, and then screwing the um, catch closed so that it then keeps everything in place while the stitching is happening. Over at the embroidery machine, I'm going to position the hoop under the needle and make sure that it's attached firmly to the machine before I get going. Now I'm not going to show you how to thread the machine because that's fairly basic operation and once you've learnt it once it's the same every time. So here is the machine stitching as I work my way through the colours. I have sped this up considerably as I wanted to show you um, how the design forms and how it doesn't always just stay in one particular area. And that's because it's been designed not to stretch the fabric as it's doing this. It's also overlaying different colours together or overlaying the same area a couple of times with the same colour to add shading, which is a clever way of colour usage. Um, so you can see how I've got away with quite a, a limited colour palette here. Anyway, um, that's just really sort of how things come together. Once complete, this is what the design looked like in the hoop, and then I basically put it in a bamboo frame, and that's going to hang on my wall. Beautiful, isn't it? So that's the design from Urban Threads, recolored in Hatch Embroidery Digitizing Software, all done and dusted. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give me a thumbs up, like. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below the video. And of course, if you would like to see more from me in the future, please press the subscribe button. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I will see you again next time.